All right, today we're looking at a uh, Gallagher MR2500 that came in, got mailed back to us. Uh, it's having problems, it's not working. Uh, this is actually from a customer in New Mexico and uh, looks like you can see the dust and the dirt from, uh, from uh, years of use. It's about five years old, I guess. And I think what they've had is probably a power surge or a lightning strike or something that may have blown the fuse inside or replaced, or we just need to replace the module. You can see the dirt on it. Uh, it also kind of rigged up here. looks like he had some problems with it and lost a, this power uh, connection there. And so what we're going to do is probably replace it with a brand new module that we have here from Gallagher. And uh, you can get those from any dealer. But uh, you can send, a, send your... Uh, Send your uh, things in back to us if you need it. We're going to work here in our shop, in our uh, office. It's above our shop. And uh, we're here at the kitchen. We have a nice little kitchen here we work at and we use it on the counter. So we're going to take it apart and uh, swap out parts and get it going. And you can see here we uh, have one apart. And we've had to replace the module, which is kind of the motherboard of the machine. This one got fried by a uh, lightning strike. And you can see some blackening there and some problems the fuse was blown here's where the little fuse would be up here and it's easy to fix if you want to test it out first but they're pretty easy to take apart and swap out and what you do is you take off the capacitors and the transformer and once you have the uh, the capacitors and the uh, transformer out you take out the motherboard and make sure you don't get shocked make sure you discharge these with a screwdriver or something so they don't shock you. They, they do whop a punch. Uh, the board just pops out and pops back in. You put everything back down. It's pretty easy on how to do it. Uh, I think I can show you here. Well, maybe not. Maybe not with one hand, but uh, but it's pretty easy to do. Uh, this also has dip switches for your uh, remote if you have a remote for it. Now we're going to put it back together, and you can see we're in our uh, in our office in our kitchen. In our office is all we use to. Uh, to fix the the the, tra the uh, energizers, so it's pretty easy. We can do it right over here on the kitchen sink and uh, on the counter, and um, so it works out really well. And then we're going to test it out. Uh, it should be getting about 7,500 volts off of it, and we'll put it on our energy performance meter to make sure it works good. All right, as you can see, we have our energizer cleaned up, back together, ready to go, and we're getting a nice. Uh, signal off of it and it seems to be working pretty well what i'm going to do now is just kind of connect the uh i'm going to connect the uh the uh voltmeter that i have to it to see what kind of uh, reading we're getting and it looks like you're getting uh, about uh 7700 volts coming off of there that's 7.6 7.7 volts so 70, 7,600 volts coming off there is quite a lot. Uh, doing good. Uh, it's just like brand new. So the secret here is uh, keep it on a surge protector from your outlet. Make sure you put it on a surge protector. It's not on here, but I think that's probably what the problem was. It wasn't on a surge protector. This is uh, from a ranch in New Mexico. And I bet what happened is this ranch is at the end of the power line. And it had a surge of power. And it just it hit the uh, went out to the barn where the fencer was and probably uh, it hurt the fencer. So make sure for five bucks you can buy at any hardware store a surge protector. Put your energizers on a surge protector, so uh, so this doesn't happen. You don't have to uh, worry about power failures and whatnot. So this is ready to go. We're going to ship it back to the guy and a nice customer out there in New Mexico, and uh, uh, we'll get it going. Thank you now.